Hey guys, welcome back. Or Bomb here, bringing you another one of our live deck matchups, some Unbroken Bonds content. Uh, if you guys have been enjoying the non-stop uploads of Unbroken Bonds, don't forget to leave a like. Answer the comment question of the day too for a chance to win a couple Unbroken Bonds codes whenever those comes out. We do have our lo lovely sponsors at Guardian Gaming hooking me up for some codes um, to give to you guys. So leave a comment down below. Let, let me know. Um, I don't know. Uh, what's your favorite baby Pokemon that comes out? <laughs> because we are leading with one of the brand new baby Pokemon, Cleffa. Now, at first I was kind of like mad about the about the baby Pokemon, but like it actually doesn't really hurt to play it um, because it has free retreat. If it gets knocked out, it's whatever. Usually you're playing this in like tag team deck decks anyways. So like if it gets knocked out, it doesn't really affect the fact that you're going to, um, that your opponent still needs two knockouts, two tag team knockouts to win the game. Of course, I'm playing this in a Whimsicott deck, which is what I'm playing on the left, as you can see. Whimsicott GX versus uh, my opponent, Kate, playing... Um, a Reshiram and Charizard GX. Now, let's go over some of these cards. And also, don't forget to check out uh, the Patreon and subscribe. So we're, we're on the road to hitting like 7K subscribers. That's what I want to do by the time Unbroken Bonds comes out. So go ahead and uh, subscribe if you have not already. It's supporting the content. And don't forget to leave a like. It actually helps so much. But uh, Cleffa's ability, uh, which I just saw, is flip a coins. If heads, shuffle your hand, draw six. Regardless, your turns end, even if you do get a heads or tails. So... It's kind of bad because it's a turn ending attack, but usually you're using this on turns you can't attack anyway, so it's not a big deal. If you get it, it helps. If not, whatever, you have a free pivot in the active. Um, we're playing Rambami in this deck, as you can see. Um, but right now it's a cue to fly, but Rambami prevents the effects of Guzmas and stuff as well, so it actually really is nice in this deck. Um, my opponent has Charizard Rush Ram down. Uh, let's go over Let's go over some of these Pokemon, right? We have Volcano in the active here. It's a, attack does. Um, attack accelerates energies from your deck to your hand, from your deck to your Pokemon one energy But if you're going second on the first turn, uh, you can attach three energies from your deck to your Pokemon So it's like a free Kiawe almost one less card. Do I like it? I'm not too sure but it's a non GX attacker with a pretty decent attack. Let's go over what the attack does as well um, Let me see uh, High heat blow up with the damage with four more energies are attached to your Pokemon in place attack the 60 more damage You're gonna have a lot of energies on play in this deck anyway, so it's pretty good so um, we do have Gardevoir and Sylveon here as an energy accelerator. Pretty much that's all it is. Because we have Rambambi, my opponent doesn't have a way to Guzma up my Gardevoir and Sylveon, but we are going to judge here. Just try to disrupt my opponent a little bit. My Gardevoir and Sylveon's attack attaches two fair energies to your, from your deck to your Pokemon in any way you like. So it's really, really nice. It's for a colors attack cost too. So it's a pretty decent attack, actually. Um, um, and then let's go over Whimsicott, because Whimsicott's the main star right now as far as like what I'm playing. Uh, Fluffy Cotton is the ability, if any damage done to this Pokemon by attacks, flip a coin of heads prevent that damage. So, <clears throat> very, very annoying. You can only attack it every other turn. Uh, and then it has the attack Energy Blow, which is 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon, so that can ramp up. We also have Triple Boost Energy in this deck. There's my opponent playing Welder, which is you attach two Fire Energies from your deck to your, from your hand to your Pokemon, and then draw three cards, so it's both a draw supporter and an energy accelerator. An incredibly strong supporter card for Fire decks. Uh, also, back to Whimsicott though, Toy Box GX says you search your deck for up to five cards, put them into your hand. Uh, probably a card I'm not going to be using very often, but still pretty good. So as you can see, turn two, my opponent has so many energies on the board because they just play Kiawe as well, putting my Charizard Reshiram at six at six energies. But let's talk about Charizard and Reshiram real quick. Um, or technically Reshiram and Charizard. So for two energies, it has Outrage, which is 30 damage plus 10 more damage for each damage card on this Pokemon. So it's an attack that you use whenever you get attacked, right? Uh, you also have the attack Flare Strike, which is the bread and butter of this Pokemon. 230 damage, which is such a ridiculously large amount of damage. With a choice menu, you know, knock out the majority of Pokemon in on in the game right now. Uh, but you can use Flare Strike during your next turn, which is fine because you usually get attacked and then you retaliate with Outrage. So it's not bad. But Double Blaze GX is really cool. There's 200 damage, but if this Pokemon has at least three extra energy attached to this Pokemon, um, it does 100 more damage and is not affected by any effects of your opponent's active Pokemon, which means that the ability that Whimsicott has doesn't work. It'll just get damaged by a 300 attack card, which is crazy. Uh, we have Viridian Force in here just to accelerate a little bit more energies. We need to get energies every turn in this deck because it's all about attaching a bunch of energies to our uh, Pokemon, to our Whimsicotts to make sure that we can take Okos. So, that's the game plan here. So we are just going to use, uh, I'm just loading up energies on one Whimsicott in this deck, uh, mainly because like, uh, because we can't be Guzmud, we can't be counter gained, I, counter catch it, I believe. Uh, just g going over, let me go over Rambami's abilities text by text, just just to double check. Um, so you guys know I'm not going crazy. Rambami TCG. <clears throat> I believe this is the Lost Thunder one, right? Uh, I'm sorry. Who said, uh, whatever, um, F3. I, I, I text Rambami and it sent me to this page. Um, that's weird. Anyways, um, 
I'm gonna find it, no worries. Yeah, right now the decks are going through the motions. Because I can't be Guzmud, I'm allowing my, I'm just loading up a bunch of energies on my Whimsicott. Now my opponent does play a stadium called Unmanned Power Plant, which does turn off the abilities of GX Pokemon, which is pretty scary, not going to lie. Um, so that's one that's one thing I'm trying to avoid right now. Uh, which one is the room? Here it is. All right, I found it. I'm going to read it. One second, load up the page. Um, here we go. As long as this Pokemon's on your bench, whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from their hand to prevent all effects of this card, done to your fairy Pokemon and play. Okay, cool. So only supporters are, are, are affected, not trainers. Something I just want to double check. But let's see what my opponent's going to do here. Now, as you can see, I'm all about that early game setup. Having that free retreat pivot Pokemon in a baby as well it helps a lot in these kind of decks. Um, I am pulling up the Charizard. I do want to knock it out if I can. I'm trying to find a triple boost here too because triple boost increases my damage output by 90. Unfortunately, it looks like I whiffed. So I think I'm just going to have to spend a few more turns just setting up my board. Um, my opponent did knock out a Gardevoir here though. I can't attack it because if I attack it, I will just be outraged for knockout. I could also be GX as well. My opponent looks like my opponent actually GX Gardevoir um, already. So Gardevoir got knocked out thanks to the GX attack. But that's good because that means he won't be able to GX... <coughs> um, my Whimsicott, which means he has to find the Unmanned Power Plant Supporter, which is a brand new stadium, not supported by the way, that lets you, that lets you, um, head, so we get, we do get the Shuffle Draw, which is good, that lets you turn off the abilities of all GX Pokemon and EX Pokemon in play, which is fairly strong, especially versus Whimsicott, <laughs> for sure. My opponent's getting out Ho-Oh's different weaknesses here, that's the reason why I'm playing Ho-Oh, just, just in case we fight against water decks, it's nice to have a pretty strong fire type attacker. As you can see, we just got three triple boosts in our, into our hand. A little bit too many, but whatever. It's all we need to just take a knockout here. So we're just trying to Oko these things. There's Fire Crystal that lets you, get, lets you uh, get two Fire Energy cards from your discard pile onto your hand. Um, so it's just Energy Retrieval pretty much. Um, at least you get three, but there's only two down there. So it's just a stronger Energy Retrieval. It's a very good card, especially in this, case, in this deck where you're using cards like Welder and stuff. It lets you have more manual attachments, things like that. So he doesn't use Outrage for 30, not knocking me out, which is good. We have a bench full of Whimsicott. We even have the um, the Muscle Dumbbells, which increases our HP. Um, this goes from 190 to 230. Unfortunately, it doesn't really change too much as far as like getting knockouts from the things, but the Ho-Ohs and the Turtonators can't Oko me anymore. So we are able to just blow away my opponent with so much damage. I believe we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 9. So we hit for 20, uh, 280 damage. It's a lot of damage. I believe there's a uh, 1, 2, 3. No, we actually have 7 energies, don't we? It's, it's hard for me to count because it's sideways. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, it's 6 plus the drip boost. So yeah, 20, uh, 280 damage, which is such a ridiculous amount of damage. And because I won't be able to be Oko'd here because she put all of her eggs in one Reshiram Charizard basket, uh, <laughs> I think we'll be okay. She's going to damage me. Shell Trap is annoying because it will damage me. And she has to flip every time to attack me. So she did get heads to attack me there. And since she doesn't have the stadium down, there's nothing she can do to stop me from being damaged. Of course, I will be damaged from Shell Trap, but I actually don't mind. Uh, here, I'm just trying my best to set up as many... As another Whimsicott, because if I do get knocked out, I could still lose. Luckily, I'm never going to be able to be Guzmud because of my Rimbombi, so I'm pretty safe there. And I doubt my opponent plays Countercatcher <laughs> in this deck, so I'm not worried about Countercatcher either. Escape Rope could be annoying, but I can just give my opponent like a the Cleffa or something. It's all good. So let's see what my opponent can do. Just another, I'm going to play Viridian Forest. I believe I'm failing the Viridian Forest because I'm not looking through my deck. Probably have no more energies in there anyways. And I'm just going to attack here because with six energies, see, I'm hitting for knockout. I'm hitting 190. <clears throat> Let's see if there's anything else. I guess I'm just debating a couple things. Like if I'm going to, if I want to take the damage on it. Because if I take the damage, I can be knocked out. Uh, but I think I'm just, yeah, I think I'm just going to toy box here. Maybe find myself a Guzma so I don't have to take the damage. Uh, I can keep myself out of Ho-Oh range, and probably just want to knock out that Ho-Oh, because I'm, I am already have, I only have three prizes left, so we have, we have the ability to easily win this game if I just make sure I'm outside of Ho-Oh's range. I don't want to rely on any coin flips, I don't want to rely on my opponent finding unmanned power plant, so, um, I'm just gonna rock with this. She, she can still use Welder, kind of like, I don't know, I feel like maybe she should try to find another Reshram Charizard at this point. 
but she puts it down. I can Guzma and knock it out. So I guess she's trying to be a little bit more careful, giving herself a few extra turns. Although she has to know the Guzma's coming because I just used my Toy Box GX attack to probably get me a Guzma into my hand. Um, setting up Ho even uh, setting up Ho some more. Probably just going to continue using Shell Trap, Green Search. Uh, really, really strong cards in these kind of decks because when you have no abilities on board, you can grab any two cards from your deck. Of course, uh, any two trainer cards from, into, from her deck to her hand. So. Uh, she's grabbing Fire Crystal, get more energies into her hand, and I guess she's just trying to debate what else she can grab. She could grab a Mana Power Plant. Um, surprised she hasn't grabbed it yet. Maybe, maybe she just doesn't feel like she needs it right now, uh, which is fair because she's she she's a, she got Tail, so no damage to me. But um, it's completely fair because like she doesn't need to put any extra damage on me besides Shell Trap damage. Of course, the twenty damage could have put me in range, right, of one ninety. But maybe she has a choice band in hand. That could be a thing as well. I'm gonna go ahead and ace roll of this thing. This is a burner card, I'm assuming. Um, maybe have extra bench space for something like Xerneas Prism, because I am playing Xerneas Prism here, and that's exactly what it is. I can Guzma up the Xerneas Prism and knock out the Ho -Oh this turn uh, while keeping my Whimsicott in bay, giving myself a non GX attacker. Uh, Turnator can't really Oko it because. Uh, actually, no, Turnator can Oko it. But I don't think I care too much about Turnator Okoing it. I'm just gonna Guzma and retreat. Yeah, this is, this is probably better, maybe, so I can preserve my Guzmas for later. Um, because I can still just use Trooper, Trooper Boost to knock out the Ho-Oh if I need to. But here I'm just going to go ahead and take a knockout with Xerneas Prism. Fairly strong card in this deck. Once again, just the ability of not needing to be Guzma is really good. I'm just looking through my deck here, seeing what's up. There's only four cards out to my deck, so I ran through my deck. Uh, being able to accelerate energies using um, Gardevoir, as well as just drawing a bunch using... Um, just draw supporters as well as Cleffa means I can really go through my deck very quickly and so that's really cool um, I still have three energies on my bench boy my bench was a cut so a triple boost is enough to knock out um, Ho -Oh if I need to she's gonna knock me out of course but she knocks me out she can't attack me the following turn so this puts her in a weird position where she has to find a Guzma or something she could also attack me with this thing that's not bad either <laughs> of course, I only have one prize left to take anyway, so if she attacks me with this, she loses the game. Um, she has to knock out my uh, my Whimsicott on the bench. Because if she doesn't knock out Whimsicott on the bench, then um, she just kind of loses here. And as you can see, that's just the game. Triple boost should be enough. That's a DCE, actually, so maybe not. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, actually, I guess I don't have any triple boost right now. Um, I don't want to shuffle because I like my hand. Uh, she can't Guzma. I was saying Guzma over and over again, but she just can't Guzma, so never mind. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, like Charizard Reshram is still a very strong deck that can dominate very easily. 50 damage to the bench and another triple boost just to close out the game. And there we go. I guess I didn't. I guess I needed more than triple boost to take a knockout there, but we did take a knockout on that dude. So once again, love the. I like Whimsicott, man. I think it's really annoying. I don't think I'd personally play it, and I think it just takes an auto loss to like unmanned power plant. Uh, just as a, just as a card itself, this deck is only playing one right now. Charizard Reshram, you can bump it up to two in any decks, but like, I feel like in decks that don't play like GX abilities, it's never a bad card to play unless you need a very specific stadium. This deck itself doesn't need a very specific stadium. Maybe after the set, after this one comes out, when you get that um, the the big oven, you could probably play it. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys, and get some water because I'm thirsty and talking a lot hurts. But I do get that um. That wisdom teeth removal done on Tuesday. I'm recording this on the 6th. I'm going to get that done Tuesday, which is going to be the 9th, I believe. Yeah, the 9th. Maybe three days from now. Sunday. Yeah, the 9th. Okay, cool. So that that hopefully I'm going to need a couple days to recover. So I'm trying to record all these games quickly. Um, but if I don't get to record all these games quickly because of work, because I have to go to work today as well as tomorrow, as well as the other next day, then I have school. So if I don't get these games all recorded, you might miss one day of uploads. Hopefully not too Hopefully in, not more than that we'll have to see let's see what my opponent gets here heat factory a, a charizard restaurant lead while i have a a guardy lead so it's not exactly the best thing for me welder here as well accelerating so over overall she just drew six cards without really using a strong draw supporter just welder as well as having a charizard restaurant with two energies on it but no other i'm surprised she didn't manually attach return maybe she wants to keep it for heat factory completely fair but uh she lost it so that's unfortunate uh, she needs to get another welder to attack this turn, which she can, but that's not going to be enough without choice band. I believe Gardevoir Sylveon has a, um, yeah, 260 HP, so she needs choice band here. 
So she might just outrage and then do it just because there's no purpose. Or maybe she can just like attack it big damage and then use outrage, but I think she wants to keep the outrage play live. So I, I could see I could see my opponent just like manually attaching, just continuing to set up her board instead of using welder, and then like using just outrage this turn to put the Gardevoir in range. Of course I can retreat, which is not super great, but it's in range for later as well. So that thing can never become active again. But there's a Kiawe in her hand that she can use as well to active the bench. So this is like, this actually works out quite nicely as well. It just sucks because once again, the Gardevoir is outside of range. So she, if she if she plays Choice Band, she has to find the Choice Band. I actually don't remember if we play Choice Band in this deck because it's been... I haven't done a deck profile of this deck since Spring Break, so it's been a while. <laughs> I don't actually remember off the top of my head. But if she does play the Choice Band, she has to find it. I'm sure this deck plays like a one of Choice Band because there's no reason not to. <coughs> Wonder Labyrinth, super duper annoying for my opponent. They force them to have to find another stadium here because otherwise they have to attach one extra energy to attack, which means that unless she finds Welder here, she can't attack me next turn with Charizard, um, which is going to be annoying. And she needs to have seven energies to take an Oko with Charizard on the active on one of the Charizards here, just because of the Wonder Labyrinth. Of course, she could retreat the active one, bump the stadium, use Welder, and then GX my Gardevoir in the active just to take Oko's if she can't find the Choice Band. But there's a chance she finds a Green's Green here. All she needs is a manual attachment. Green gets her a stadium plus choice ban, things like that. But I'm just setting up my Whimsicots right now on the bench. Let's see. She's going to continue setting up the bench one. She can't Guzma, but she does have switch. Um, now, can she bump the stadium or find a choice ban here? Or is she just going to attack? So she's going to attack for 230. Uh, once again, I don't know if I really like that just because it means she won't be able to use it again next turn. Um, I think she should have just softened me up with Outrage first and then... Uh, played switch so I, I feel like sequencing was a little bit incorrect there but at the same time um doesn't matter too much it could matter like i could ace a roll of this and then that's like a flare strike she can't use the following turn but unless she has another switch it doesn't matter too much but i don't know like i maybe maybe it's like a bait and play where she does have another switch in hand and she's just like well if i if i play this um She'll, he'll think it's a misplay and yada 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 and then i can use switch and take an oko and stuff like that that's always a possibility right I'm uh, going to grab Rimbombi here so there's no more Guzma shenanigans. Um, <clears throat> and just, just throw the Cynthia across the board because I was in my hand and then shuffle my hand. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it, it's a little bit hard to make sure everything stays on the screen, guys, just because, once again, recording on my phone since my camcorder broke. And since I'm recording with my phone, um, I, don't, I can't really see what's happening on screen. But it's fine. It's all good. Hopefully, I'm, uh, so once I get out of debt, I'm probably going to buy myself a new phone. And uh, just go from there. Gonna get a Xerneas here, put it on my bench just to have it down. Uh, once again, it can't be Guzmud. So as long as it can't be Guzmud, anything on my bench is usually safe. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So we have two Combies, not not Combi. What's Whimsicott's pre-evolution? No, Cottony, not Combi. We have two Cottonies with a bunch of energies on them. A Gardevoir Sylveon that's probably gonna be knocked out here, which is just unfortunate because um, because I played Cynthia. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's just it. We're just gonna have to let ourselves be knocked out here. Uh, I had the Ace Roll in hand, but I just wanted if if I didn't get Whimsicott, I just lost the game. I need I need a Rimbombi, I need Whimsicott, I needed a lot here. So um, I can still win, and she has to take three prizes. I just it's just a matter of like <laughs> if I if I don't get Whimsicott, then I lose. I need to find Triple Boost. I need to find Whimsicott. Uh, there's a DCE, but it's not exactly enough to win me the game quite yet. I could Guzma and knock out like the Ho-Oh on the bench. It's definitely a play I have, but still don't have any Whimsicots. I am only playing three Whimsicots here, but like, like I can't really do anything if I don't have Whimsicots. You know what I mean? That's the weakness of this deck. Now I do have the Guzma, like I mentioned earlier in my hand. I can knock out the Ho-Oh. It doesn't really get me closer to winning the game because I saw the knockout to uh, Reshiram Charizards. So that's why I'm just kind of like, do I want to do this? And um, yeah, I'll put down another Connie and I am a Cynthia. Once again, I just don't feel like there's a point in knocking out the Ho-Oh. Now, ho is scary because Ho can knock out my Connie's, <laughs> which is why I need to be attacking right now. I need to be um, getting Whimsicott like right now because I'm pretty sure Connie only has 50 HP. Yeah. So I really, really, really need to start uh, getting these Whimsicots on board. So she's just, she's so close to just taking snipe knockouts on my Connie's. And that's the scary part, man. Oh, ho, ho can just do that. <laughs> and it's so terrifying. I'm just like, oh, what am I going to do? I still haven't found a single Whimsicott yet. So I'm just clumping up right now. I did find one after, but Jesus doesn't take a knockout here um, with a flare strike and finally got my Whimsicott. So I have two Whimsicots down. So now my boys aren't 
aren't like in range of um, losing <laughs> from a ho, -Oh, but now we're kind of in this awkward place where we can lose to a good heads or an unmanned power plant play. So we can still lose. <laughs> we can still very easily lose this game. She just has to get lucky or something. So we're just gonna try to dominate here. We're trying to prevent GX attacks as well because GX attacks will win her the game. Um, so she, if she can bump the stadium and GX me, she wins. But I need to start doing something because I am just being manhandled here. This is the speed of Reshram Charizard. Even without the Volcanian lead, which is why I'm not a big fan of the Volcanian, it's still pretty strong. Now what I want to play in this deck <clears throat> is a pretty decent non-GX attacker. So we're just going to go ahead and sack this off because we can't take Oko's right now. Which is just annoying because we're just giving my opponent even more time to set up their fire type attackers, but whatever. Um, so I think this kind of like solidifies the game for my opponent, but like, what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying at all. At like not in the slightest. But like Fiery Flint out here getting getting them <laughs> a bunch of fire energies. Uh, so many energies on the board, man. And like all my opponent has to do is set up a GX attack for game. I guess they're counting Guzmas. Uh, I'm not too sure what they're doing here. Well, they can't take a knockout this turn, which is, I guess, something. But I have to knock out the active, right? So like, this is just weird because I, I don't have free retreat on my Cotney. The one retreat cost. So I have to find a switching. And there's the unmanned power plant. So uh, I have, I'll bump my stadium in a second, guys. But she's just going to take a knockout here, I suppose. So, um, <clears throat> oh, but don't worry about the discard pile. It'll, it's it's lost zone. We all know how it is. All right, so now it's all down to this. I have to find Guzma, triple boost, and knock out one of the Charizards. Her retreating gives me a win con. Um, I don't have any more of the fairy stadium, though. So we'll see what happens. If I can knock out the one with three energies on it, that's going to be really good for me. But I need to find Guzma. Okay, we're knocking out the one with two energies on it. Not super sure why. We're not even taking a knockout here. I guess that's why, because it has a higher retreat cost. Never mind. So yeah, we're not taking a knockout, which is just awkward. But Outrage just kind of wins the game, right? So I can't really do anything at this point. Yeah, that's right. All right. So Outrage just wins the game. So unfortunately, yeah, we were so behind in that game. My opponent, my, I remember Kate was telling me, well, you got to do something because I'm just going to lose. There's all my counter, my triple boost, by the way. So like the whole deck, I was just like, oh, where are my triple boosts? Where are my Whimsicott? So I was just having a hard time finding everything in that deck. But I remember, I just remembered in this game, the reason why I did that was because, well, <clears throat> Kate told me she has the game next turn regardless because she has, <laughs> she just has game. Uh, because of Welder and stuff, she can just GX me. So it's just whatever. Like at that point, we're just going to move on. Just pack it up and move on to the next game. We were way too behind that game. And with Unmanned Power Plant down, down and no other way to bump that stadium, the second I attacked was the second I lost anyway. So let's move on here to the next game. Turning a lead on my opponent. Not the best lead, but definitely using that first attack doesn't hurt my opponent at all. I'm just going to attach and, attach and Cynthia. So that's the biggest problem I'm having with this deck right now is this consistency issue. Uh, even with four nest ball, four ultra balls and stuff, I'm not getting my Pokemon down. I'm not finding my Whimsicott's. I think I, I think if I were to play this deck again, I would have to play a four four Whimsicott line because just not finding my Whimsicott's for so long was super annoying. Uh, not finding my triple boost was super annoying as well, but at least we got the important cards down. <clears throat> now I do like Gardevoir and Sylveon here just to accelerate energies. Uh, we do have the baby as a free retreater. Also Rimbombi has free retreat as well, just something to keep in mind. And so does this, uh, Cutify. So you have lots of free retreaters in this deck, which is pretty good. I'm gonna retreat here, uh, lose the energy, and just see if we can get a new hand. And we did not, so yay, babies. <laughs> uh, Pokey here to try to find some supporters. Uh, finding a green is not bad. No welder turn one, which is fine, but uh, green can get your, your board set up quite nicely. Speaking of welder, there's a welder. Being able to get any two trainer cards is once again just like. It's just so strong. Getting two elders here. Uh, does she have Charizard down? I mean, obviously you want to try to get down Charizard as soon as you can. Just try to set up the GX attack to hit past effects. Uh, things like that. And another green because maybe she needs to find more stuff later. I don't know. Uh, fire energy attachment. And that's just a pass. She can't use her thing quite yet. So... Yeah, we'll go ahead and start this turn off. Uh, Lily for a few cards. Still trying to find things like Whimsicott and Rimbombi and things like that. So let's see what we can do. 
I would like a Gardevoir here as well, just to start accelerating energies on the board. That wouldn't be bad. Um, there's a Rimbombi. Now, can we find a Guardi? If we can find Guardi, attach an energy, retreat, and start accelerating energies onto my Whimsicott, on my Cottonese, I mean, that'd be really good. So that's the game plan right now. Unfortunately, <clears throat> we did not do that. And our, and our, and our baby failed us again. Now, am I a fan of the baby card? I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. A Fury Cheater is not bad. I'm just switching out cards for the next matchup, by the way, guys. So ignore all those medals. No. My opponent's setting up. My opponent doesn't have much going on right now. They just use Fiery Flint to get a bunch of energies into hand. So manual attachment, they can start using that one attack. A Welder to start setting up a Charizard, draw a few cards. Nest Ball gets them probably another Charizard, right? Or is that Ho-Oh? That might be Ho-Oh. Um, I believe it's Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh is good for sniping. So she wants to probably start sniping again. This is the perfect matchup for sniping, so I can see it. 20 damage on my Cleffa. Not a big deal. My boy, my, my, little, my little baby Cleffa is tanky. So we're going to go ahead and, and try to pull off the play I was mentioning over and over and over again. I really need to get um, Gardevoir down. Gardevoir Sylveon down. Manual attachment. So I guess no Gardevoir Sylveon this turn. And once again, failed flip from Cleffa. Things are looking dire right now. <laughs> My opponent's setting up the board while I'm just super behind. Once again, back to not finding the uh, Pokemon I need. No Gardevoir Sylveon, no Whimsicots to avoid sniping, no anything. So I'm just stuck. <coughs> Fortunately for me, she doesn't have any energies on this hoe yet. So no sniping quite yet. Using greens to get a couple welders in hand. Just really load up those welders so she constantly has them. Drawing cards, definitely not bad. She has the time to do it. Now, do I like Welder? Do I like Green Search in um, in this deck? I think so. Uh, it's just because you're not going to use Welder every turn in this game. Like, you only have four Welders, and even if you play Palpad, you're not going to find Welder every turn. So that's why I like the Green Search. Some people want to play Salazzle, the, the evolution card, so you can attack with it um, if you play against Fileplume. And um, it lets you draw cards as well. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. My throat's killing me. Um... Let's you draw cards with its ability, discard a fire, draw three. Um, but do I like it in this deck? I don't think I do. Um, draw a three is just not enough. Even combined with Welder, you still need to play the Welder to combine it with Welder, right? And then you're going to run out of Welders at some point. So from my experience, it just hasn't been powerful enough, especially in this deck where like you have energy acceleration already. So you just got to search for stuff. So that's why I'm a fan of the green. Getting down another cute fly here isn't necessary. Not really, but... Um, from what I can see, there's not too much going on here. And once again, I finally get heads off my uh, Cleffa, which is good, but I want to get knocked out here, and I still need to find me some dudes. I'm just not finding anything right now. So Lieutenant Surge is really strong in just tag team decks in general. Having, having Lieutenant Surge means that you can both use Green and um, Welder at the same turn, which is pretty strong, strong, as well as just being able to use two Welders is not bad either. <coughs> I'm just gonna take a knockout here. I'm gonna draw my six cards before like my turn ends and boom, uh, sit out my free retreater and let's go. Let's see what we can find. We have Xerneas in hand, so Xerneas can technically take a knockout, although it's not ideal by any means. Uh, I think we just actually have to do it. Cynthia, unless we find, like we don't have any bench space. Oh, I remember. And this match, my Gardevoir and Sylveon was prized. So yeah, that's what it was. And I only play a one of in this deck, just for energy acceleration. So that it com it com there's a bunch of bad in this matchup. We did get Whimsicott, though, finally, so that's pretty good. No Fairy Energies, though, so we won't be able to attack with uh, Xerneas' this turn. Um, so maybe you should up the count of Gardevoir Sylveon to two, just so you can actually find them. They won't be prized. Because uh, as you can see, this is just a bunch of unfortunate events as far as my match goes. Um, I'm thinking just weakening with this card and hoping they don't get a heads. Um, attach Triple Boost, and now we hit for at least 130, right? So 130, we take the 80 damage from the ability, or from the effect, I mean, and just go from there. It's a two KO, so we can at least take a knockout. If they have if they have Retram Charizard down, combined with both Ho-Oh and Turtonator, we should be okay. Fiery Flint and a bunch of Welders. Uh, we're not behind on prizes, so they can't use Lieutenant Surge quite yet, but they are. we are going to be behind after we take this knockout here. I don't know if she's going to go off the flip. Maybe she has Unmanned Power Plant in hand just to guarantee a knockout. We'll see what she can do here.
Just another card, flipping, getting the thingy tails, but I will take another 80 damage. Not enough for a knockout, but Outrage will knock me out from there. Radiant Forest, finally, uh, but are we gonna play it down? I'm debating. <clears throat> so I don't want it to be bench. I don't want to discard anything in my hand. I just really want to take prizes to try to find Gardevoir while I can. But the problem is if I find it too late, then Charizard comes in and GXs me for knockout, which is a problem. So attaching energy there, Guzma up the Ho-Oh, because this thing can be knocked out later. Of course, she can't always find Max Potion. We do know she's playing it. So um, just taking a knockout here. That thing is just too much of a threat. Taking less damage too means I'm out of range of Outrage. So that's pretty good. And she's just going to take a knockout here. I guess, I guess she does technically have a free turn because there's no more energies on my board, right? We did take two prizes, so hopefully one of them is Gardevoir. That'd be ideal. Fire fun to get a couple more energies just so she can start using um, Welder, of course. Fire has so much support right now. Uh, now, will Fire be as good with Shining Legends rotating? If it, if it, I don't know. I keep thinking about rotation because like we're only one set away from rotating if you don't count this set. Uh, Welder here, attaching two more energies, so that thing is a threat right now with four energies on it, enough to hit 230. Um, and she's going to take a knockout here, so, well, and I can't do anything about it. Of course, you need a fair energy to attack with uh, Whimsicott, so I need to have a fair energy on top of the triple boost to take a knockout, so I'm just kind of stuck. Did I find Guardy, though? If I find Guardy, um, and she doesn't have switch, we do have a chance. Um... We're getting rid of the triple boost because we're just that stuck right now. Just need to find a manual attachment this turn, so. Let's see, but we also need like, it'd be nice if we had a Whimsicott. Like a different Whimsicott, an undamaged one. That'd be ideal. Of course it doesn't matter because we always get O-Code anyways by Charizard. So I guess it doesn't matter too much. Let's just attach the bench Cottony. And hopefully we have a draw supporter. We don't. So there's no more ho -Oh, though. So we're not going to get sniped this turn. So we're pretty safe there. Losing a cottony just sucks, but whatever. And there's a switch that I was worried about. Max Potion, again, another card I was worried about. But we can always Oko that later. Welder for another two energies. And I guess Outrage is going to knock out because we have a 30 HP on this one. Because it's the only one with three retreat, unfortunately, is a 30 HP one. So we can't do too much about it. We do have Nest Ball, but we can't really find anything with Nest Ball because there's nothing to find. Uh, we can't attach Triple Boost until we evolved either. So we're just we're just kind of sitting here. We could Toy Box. I could Toy Box and force her to GX now. It won't win her the game, obviously. So we're going to Toy Box here just to get stuff into our hand. And there we go. We're also going to put down the Wonder Labyrinth just to, just to have it down. Prevent a potential GX attack next turn. Of course, if she finds unmanned, it's just kind of awkward. But we need to get her board set up. And Toy Box is good for that, but I just I just don't like putting my Whimsicott in danger. This is just a weird matchup for Whimsicott. Of course, it's a matchup you're going to see a lot because Charizard Reshiram is probably going to be up there in the um, top decks and format. So that's, I figured it'd be a good... It's, it's never a bad time to showcase this matchup. She's using green, so that means no, um, no Welder this turn. And she does play the Choice Band, so we know the Choice Band's in the deck now. Uh, Fiery Flint as well. No point using Fiery Flint this turn, or just, well, I guess she'll use it anyways. I guess she gets a manual attachment off this way. Um, she's running low on fire. Only two more left. Uh, she doesn't have Vol she doesn't have um, Victini anymore as another non-GX attacker in this deck. So she's going to attach it manually. There's the unmanned power plant. Super awkward. And just going to take a knockout here, and I can't do anything about it. Um, <laughs> the looks of it. We finally got Whimsicott down. Uh, I'm just going ham right now. So I'm just like, uh, okay, we got Diantha. Diantha doesn't really do much, but we do give Viridian Forest to bump the stadium immediately. And a judge, I guess. Um, just hand disruption is not bad. We do, I definitely want to bump that stadium immediately. And uh, just attach an energy. And I, oh, this one already has a fair energy on it, so we at least do damage. Uh, Outrage doesn't take a knockout. She needs a GX, and she can GX thanks to Welder. And that's going to be the game. So as you can see, Charizard Reshiram is a dominant force. But you definitely saw in game one how strong and how um, how powerful this deck can Whimsicott can be whenever you have just a really good setup. The problem was game two and three, the really good setup just vanished. So <laughs> so uh, there might be some there might be some deck building things we can change. But I will profile this deck anyway. So I don't feel like I feel like it was just like a bad luck thing. Maybe a fourth Whimsicott GX for sure. A second Gardevoir Sylveon GX as well. 
so we can actually find these cards the fact that i wasn't finding them was just a huge issue because we were finding triple boosts usually in clumps at a time so maybe the deck was clumping as well um but the the fact that you have a gx tech that ignores the effects of pokemon uh, including the wizard cards ability is really strong as well as unread power band that turns off the ability is really strong because the whole deck is kind of like teetering on the fact that you have that ability that prevents damage sometimes so you have to so your opponent has to like choose either flip or guzma but they can't guzma so they always have to flip because of rimbombi just the deck itself is cool um but definitely think that charizard red shaman is very very strong right now i'm really excited to showcase that deck to you guys so don't forget to tune in tomorrow for whimsicott deck profile and then the day after that for a charizard deck profile uh both very powerful decks i've been doing really well in japan right now uh, answer the comment question today for a chance to win a couple of codes check out the patreon if you want to support me the sponsors as well lovely guard lovely people at guardians gaming uh check out the merch i have some links to my merch down below check out all this stuff i do appreciate it, it helps me out check out my twitter follow me on twitter guys i don't have enough twitter followers you know what i'm saying like hook a man up with that follow <laughs> anyways i'll see you guys next time with another matchup in deck profile peace